What is going on guys, my name is Bryce and today we're going to do a little review of the Hypercube and its construction so make sure you stay tuned and I'll see you in a second. Alright guys, so first off, thank you very much for coming back to the channel today. Uh, we are going to quickly have a quick look at the uh, the construction of the hypercube and what it is all all the rage about uh, so pretty much off the bat the printer is built as a 200 by 200 by 200 uh, build area it has a heated bed uh, it is also designed to have and use a e3d all metal hot end uh, it is using a Bowden setup with that hot end and the most most a uh, different thing about this entire printer is the fact that it is a Core XY design. So, out of all of that, what do you really get? Well, you get a pretty solid printer. This printer is actually really, really quick and does a really good job of actually getting parts out of it. And, it, and it's really, really easy to do so as well. Um, overall, the printer itself, if you're doing what the actual printer is designed for, uh, is to be upgrading from an i3 kit you actually won't spend that much money on it. But in terms of building it directly from scratch, uh, you'll probably end up spending a decent amount of money on it, probably in the range of, or the neighborhood of about $400. And that is Australian, by the way. But if you're buying it and buying parts directly from, uh, also coming up from an i3 kit, uh, you will most likely only end up spending maybe 150 or 200 Australian giving give or take depending on what actual parts you need to actually replace or buy new. In my case, I had to buy um, some new 2020 aluminum extrusion. Uh, I actually had to end up buying two lots because the first lot became bent, uh, but that's okay, I've been compensated for that. Um, and I also had to buy a new uh, motherboard for the printer as my original ramps design or my original ramps from my i3 had actually blown up which uh, was not very helpful. Um, some small little tweaks that I've done to this printer, I'll get into in a little bit, but uh, pretty much, um, I'd have to say that overall, just as a base of this printer, uh, it is pretty much a really good starting platform if you're getting new into 3D printing or just DIY kits by yourself, or it is a really, really, really good uh, upgrade straight from uh, straight from an i3 kit. Uh, I came from my really dodgy uh, i3 Cintron kit um, and yeah it, it, this thing has been an absolute dream. Well I'd have to say that with this uh, setup and design of this printer uh, overall across all the parts I'd have to say that they are fairly well designed. Um, there are a couple of different design choices that uh, Tech2C did take into account when designing this printer. Um, it was very different in the approach of especially something to do with the x-axis. Uh, so Tech2C actually uh, ended up designing this printer with a 10 millimeter anodized aluminum rod in mind for the x-axis, which is very different, but of course you can't use uh, aluminum uh, tubing with, uh, well, ball bearings um, or like LM8GU, which is the typical ball bearing or linear motion bearing that you would use on a linear rod. Um, you can't use those because they would be too hard for the aluminum being that it's a soft material and it would end up gouging in. So Tech2C actually did a really good job of implementing using um, 10 millimeter uh, self-lubricating bushings that actually roll and move really, really smoothly on this, uh, on this printer. Uh, it's a little bit of a finic finicky uh, sort of uh, set up to try and actually get them lined up right so they don't end up causing a breaking issue but they uh, once you get them set up the the x-axis is extremely light which is a really good key feature for this actual printer because the fact that the the x-axis is really really light means you can get really quick speeds out of it as well as doing that it's really, really uh, sort of complementary to the fact of the Bowden setup where you're not having to lug around a big, really big stepper motor and extra cables around um, moving the, uh, like on top of the X-axis so you don't have that extra weight. Um, I'd have to say with my setup, 
Um, I can't be, I can't, I can't say this for every single person's setup that they've ever used with this type of printer, um, with this hypercube design, but I'd have to say that it is really good in this particular setup. So I'd, basically this setup is a bare stock standard hypercube with all the files directly off uh, Thingiverse that Tech2C has uh, provided. Um, the only difference between my printer and say Tech2C's printer or initial design is uh, my, my printer is running a MKS S-Base um, smoothieware printer uh, control board. Uh, it pretty much runs, it, like I just said, smoothieware, so it's uh, really, really good in terms of actually uh, moving everything really quickly around. Um, it's a 32-bit uh, microprocessor compared to, I think, the 8-bit on the Arduino set of things. Um, I'm not 100% sure whether or not you'd actually be able to run Marlin on this type of printer um, on, like, a, a MKS S-Base um, design. I do know for a fact that uh, this initial design is for a ramps uh, style with an Arduino setup. Um, so there's that. Uh, I also have a BL Touch, which you will also see in a lot of the shots. Uh, so this, I've got this set up so that this printer does auto bed leveling uh, every single time it starts to print. Uh, very handy little feature to have. Uh, makes leveling every, everything so easily done. Um, I've also got with the uh, X, sorry, not the X axis, the Z axis. Uh, I've actually got an integrated stepper motor with a lead screw integrated into it, just like Tech 2C has. Uh, and I've got that set up doing compensation. So once it does an auto bed level, the compensation is running. So the, the Z axis will actually raise and lower to, um, to adjust for the slight variance in the uh, bed level to make sure that the nozzle stays a set height away from the bed. Um, I'd also have to say that I am also running a server power supply. Um, I don't think you can see it behind me. No, um, I'm actually running a server power supply on this. So a lot of people tend to use the i3 style uh, power supply provided by um, whatever kit you got. Um, but I can tell you right now, that is not very good. Um, right, so this has a heated bed that I have off my old printer. Most most cheap i3 kits or just any i3 kit nowadays really does just have a very cheaply done heated bed. Uh, only problem with my printer is the fact that I'm not using the stock heated bed. Um, I'm using it as sort of a heat shield or heat sink for the bed. Uh, so I'm actually using a silicon based uh, heater which draws way more, it's like triple the current that um, that a regular PCB heated bed does. Um, and the plus of that, you get extra heat really, really quickly, but you also get extra power draw, which you cannot use on the standard, uh, standard power supplies coming from the uh, i3 kits as they just they can't provide the power. So the server power supply over here can actually provide up to 60 amps, or it's actually closer to 57 amps worth of power and at this full load printer, when everything's moving, everything's heating up and heated and stuff like that, uh, the draw is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 16 amps. So uh, lots of headroom as well, but the, the power supply for this printer is very, very beefy. And that is one thing that I 100% recommend you do is get a very beefy power supply if you intend on uh, sort of hooking up or you know, sort of using a silicon bed heater um, unless you get a weaker bed heater where it isn't going to draw as much, but then you also run into the uh, issues that you're going to end up having uh, slow heat up times. Well, so at the end of all of this and all this sort of regurgitated information that I've just provided you, pretty much I'd have to give a out of 10 score for the design of this Hypercube. Uh, I'd have to definitely give it a good solid eight and a half out of 10. Um, it's got its flaws. It does have some issues with the pulleys um, and running off the initial design of Tech 2C. It uses uh, just ball bearing, uh, flanged ball bearing uh, bearings in the uh, pulley positions just to be able to uh, move the belts around, which uh, does actually end up wearing out the belt. Um, there's a few bits and pieces, uh, weak parts, um, not 
perfectly designed parts, but look, I, I'm not ge some genius at uh, designing parts. Uh, it's just some parts I, I personally would design differently for extra strength. Uh, overall, this is a really, really good printer. I would highly, highly recommend you guys go and either build one or upgrade to one or whatever. Um, it's a really, really solid printer. Um, and it, it just it prints like a dream once you've set it up and dialed it in. All right, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, there's a lot of you that have all of a sudden started showing up and getting a lot more views than I anticipated. Um, and a lot more subscribers that I uh, anticipated in uh, such a so short amount of time. But uh, I'd have to thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you do hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell at the top of uh, or at the next to the subscription button just to make sure that you know when new videos come up. Um, I do have a lot more stuff I want to do with the Hypercube. Uh, I want to actually do a build video. That will be probably my next video. Um, and I don't know, I've just got a couple other bits and pieces that I want to do. Um, yeah, so make sure you guys also like the video. That really does help us out. And uh, also, because we are suddenly uh, approaching 100 subscribers, please make sure that you uh, subscribe as well. But please let me know in the comments what you guys want me to do. I want to do something for 100 subscribers. It doesn't sound like a lot to some people, but, you know, it, it is definitely, it is a meaningful milestone. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys, tune in next time.